morning. I'm Bob Steinberg, President of Sage Metering. Today we're going to have a 15-minute tutorial covering the exciting SageCom validation and configuration software. I also have in the top left corner the display of the Sage Paramount showing the actual readings it is experiencing from a nearby fan. Now let's get started. I'm going to enter a password in order to activate the SageCom program and that's all there is to it to get started. And then it asks you to connect, which I'm doing as you see here. It's loading the registers. And you'll notice that the password entry is required. And it's simply 99999. All of the fields will now light up, making them available to change. So let's talk about what your options are. You certainly can change the pipe area. Our instruction manuals on every product in the earlier pages shows the cross-sectional area in square feet of every pipe size. This particular cross-sectional area is for a 12-inch Schedule 40 pipe. This particular meter, the Sage Paramount, is set up for 5,000 SCFM. Now I'm going to go through a few different examples of fields you can change. Engineering units can be changed, temperature can be changed, pipe area can be changed, so can the filter, which lets you speed up or slow down the response time. For example, a 0.95 is the fastest response, and a 0.01 would be the slowest. Some customers want to change their full scale. Maybe 20 milliamps should not be 5,000, maybe it should be 4,000. Also, you have the opportunity to change baud rate or parity if your system requires different settings. In some cases, perhaps more rare, you may want to calibrate your meter initially for multiple gases or multiple pipes, such as a 2-inch pipe and a 3-inch pipe, or a digester gas with one mix and a digester gas with another mix, or better yet, two different gases. We'll charge you for the extra calibration, but basically you're just paying for the meter. Then we supply you different files that can be loaded up by just clicking this button. And of course the other button lets you save the existing current file that is loaded. So let's get started. Suppose you want to change engineering units. Notice this meter has a full scale of 5000. Notice it's reading 50. So let's change it to SCFH. Well firstly I want to show you all of the choices. There's kilograms, pounds, normal cubic meters per hour, and so forth and so on. I'm going to click on SCFH, and then I'm just going to wait. And notice the pop-up menu that shows you it's converting to a new full scale, value changed, and here we are at 30,000, correction, 300,000 SCFH, which is the same full scale in different units as 5,000 SCFM, and of course the flow rate is responding accordingly. Now maybe you want to get rid of the decimal point, so click here. Then you have a slider. Simple enough. Slide, continue. Perhaps you want to change the pipe area, and it is recommended to use this field for pipes 4 inch and up. Well, I'm going to change it to point 0.2, which would be a very, very um, smaller pipe by a couple of inches because we're going from 12 to 6. So let's put in 0 0.0003, 0.06, which is a 6-inch Schedule 40 pipe. And you'll notice when I hit, so basically I'm going to press the return key and notice what happens to the SCFH. It's going to change on the display because the pipe area is much smaller and the flow rate is going to be smaller. 
Of course, you can change the full scale. Let's say you want to change it to 60,000 and make it a round number. I'll actually go back to SCFM to continue our presentation here in our training. So we've changed the decimal point. We've changed the engineering units. You can actually change the low flow cutoff. Now, what is a low flow cutoff? Suppose you're measuring the total, and it's a critical application, and it may be important that your totalizer is protected from reading when you're at no flow. And when you're at very, very low flows, our meter is so sensitive that you'll be able to pick up even turbulence in the pipe, especially in large pipes. So you may want to put in a low flow cutoff. So let's say I put in 20 on this application at 0 to 5,000. I'll press the return key. Changes. And guess what? The flow rate's now reading zero. Of course, I'm going to put it back to uh, no low flow cutoff, and then we can continue reading. And the decimal point will even change that back as well. Continue. So, folks, are you seeing how easy it is to just enter fields? You can even change the gas mix. This particular meter, as I hit click view gas, was calibrated for. 100% methane, which is always used for natural gas. And suppose the application is really 70% methane and 30% CO2. Well, I'll put in 70 up here. And if I forget to do CO2, it warns you that you have not done 100%. You can either normalize or better yet, pick it 100% yourself. Press the return key. Hit next. And you'll see the K factor has changed because essentially what's happened, your meter now is a new meter. You haven't had to send it back, and now it's a 70, 30, and the chaos mix factor lets you know that you've changed something. Well, that's pretty much it for the examples I want to show you on what we call the main. Now, we're going to go to the milliamp response, and this particular chart is helpful for two reasons. You can see what the engineering units are versus the 4 to 20, but also suppose you want to change the 20 milliamps going to the customer's computer, the customer SCADA system. Well, you can actually do that. So what I want to do here is I'm going to put a flow input that corresponds to half scale roughly. Again, I'm going to press the return key. Notice I got 12 milliamps because I put in half the flow rate. And now I'm driving 12 milliamps throughout the plant, and they can check if they're hooked up correctly and so forth. Let's go to the real time menu. Well, I'm only reading about 15 SCFM, so change the vertical axis here so it's easier to read maybe to 40. And notice that you're getting data being logged every second. Now you can change the sampling interval to 5 seconds or 2 seconds or even 0.1 second. But if you want to data log for a long time, it only stores about 65,000 readings. So use a 5 second or 10 second interval if you want to go for for days and days. Here's the fun part. Save the above data to Excel. Click here, and I'm going to show you the reading. So here we go. All you have to do is hit File, Save As, and Save as a .xl, and uh, .xls, so it'll be a lot easier. I'm not going to bother saving now. It's that simple. Sorry about that pop-up on my screen. I also want to uh, do the most important thing for customers who have QC programs or visitors from their ISO inspector or whomever, and that is validation. It also verifies your meter hasn't drifted, shifted, or changed since the last NIST traceable calibration. 
Now let's take a moment and look at what the setting was at the factory. As you know, our zeroing chamber is used to take a zero, a no-flow reading, with your gas at your pressure, and that value is stamped on the outside of the meter, and is also on your certificate of calibration, as well as on the software program. So that number is going to be looked at when we do the in situ. But first, let's run validation to see if it's linear. So the first thing it does is it goes through a warning. You need to type in capital Y, capital E, capital S, because your 4 to 20 could affect the output of the computer or skater the system is using, and maybe they don't want that to happen. So it gives you a warning. So let me clear this screen so you can see what's happening. Notice the linearization here looks at the raw milliwatts versus the flow rate, did a random generation of different readings, 4 to 20, and finally the milliamps. And by the way, if you don't trust a reading, put your fluke on the output. And let's say you think it's 5.81, and it turns out to be 5.83. So if I make a change, and put in 5.83 because my fluke's reading that. Simply type in the number that fluke's reading, press the return key. A little bit of an error, but certainly within spec, the yellow lines are our spec. The next test is a sensor validation check, and it is determining whether the sensor has any internal damage, however rare that would be, unless you smash the sensor against the wall or something, uh, it's going to confirm that everything's in good shape. Because what it's doing is shutting the power off. And now both 100 ohm RTDs essentially are thermometers. And they're measuring the 100, actually at the, the temperature that you're sensors exposed to, it's going to have to have the same ohms for each of these RTDs. And if it does, when you divide one by the other, if they're less than 0.05 relative variance, you're in good shape and the meter will pass. And here's where you want to look, right down here to see if it passes. Notice where my cursor is. It always takes about a minute because it's shutting the power off up to the meter, passed. Final test, validation. Now when I do the in situ, it warns you to have a zero flow. So normally you'll have an isolation valve assembly and you'll slide the probe halfway out until the safety chain's taut. But in this case, I've just shut the fan off and it's good, good enough zero and let's see what happens when I click OK. And again, this takes a minute because it's taking time to heat up the sensor while looking at the flow at no flow. And remember that number we looked at earlier was 46 milliwatts. So that's the target. Will it be within 10 milliwatts of 46? And we're getting close to seeing if it passes. By the way, if your sensor's dirty, it won't pass. If your sensor is clean and the meter, as expected, hasn't drifted or shifted or changed over the time period since it's been calibrated, and you shouldn't expect it to do so. We're known for having extraordinary repeatability, reproducibility, and the drift should not be existent at all in our technology because of the hybrid bridge. So, folks, Last test, let's see if it passes, and if it does, we'll print a report. Perfect, it printed. I'm gonna put test number one. I'm going to put the technician, Bob. I'm going to print a report. I'm going to click on one of my PDFs, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And that is the end of our presentation. As soon as you see this, there it is. Notice you have the linearization. And also, let's be sure we passed. And as you can see, 
we have the SCFM and the meter has passed and the validation has 